Thank you so much, Jesus, for who you are. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love. Yes, thank you, Lord, for your love today. We come to you, Lord, today to worship you. We thank you for your love that it always 
is with us, that it always overcomes, that it always comforts us. Lord, we ask that your love would come and invade this place today. Lord, this morning as we come to worship you, Lord, we lift up those who are out fighting fires today, Lord. We ask that you would be with them, protecting them, Lord God, that you'd give them great success today. Lord, we pray for those who have lost homes, Lord, that you would come and that you would provide for them and bring comfort to them, Lord God. We, we lift up our church family this morning for those who are, are struggling or are sick, Lord God, and that you would come and that you would be with them and bring healing and hope and joy into their lives this morning. We lift you up. We praise your holy name today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, it's good to see you. If you are new with us, my name is Brad. I'm the pastor here at Abundant Life, and it's going to be an awesome Sunday. Uh, if you didn't know, we have kids' classes for uh, babies through fifth grade today. So full kids' program this morning. So if you haven't had a chance to check kids in yet, you can do so over at the house, and we're going to worship together. So let's, uh, let's get right back into worship this morning. And that silence is the enemy. And praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. And let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. Sing with all we are, we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Breakthroughs on our side forever. 
bless your name. Be glorified, Jesus. Be glorified in all the earth, Lord. Be glorified, Lord. We bless your name. We bless your name. You are so good, Lord. You are so good, Lord. You are so good, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. We praise you, Jesus. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Sing out to the Lord, use your voice, we sing out to the Lord, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we praise you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah. We bless your name, we praise you, Lord. You are so good. You are so good. Lift your voices to the Lord. We lift our voice to you, Lord. We lift our voice to you, Lord. Testifying up 
hearts continue burning. For our King is soon returning. As we hold to this assurance, Spirit come, Spirit come. Sing out your own song to him. Use your voice to sing out your song to him. Tell him what he means to you. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his sacrifice. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. This is praise that we thank you. This is praise that we honor you. It's a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, you say, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We honor you. We say thank you. We say thank you. In spite of circumstances, we say thank you. We say thank you before the breakthrough, Lord. We say thank you before the breakthrough. Rejoice, O barren. Rejoice, O barren one. For your breakthrough is here. Your breakthrough is here. Hallelujah.
Jesus Where the cross has the final word Where the cross has the final word Sorrow may come In the darkest night The cross has the worship you, Lord God, and we thank you that the cross has the final word, that you went to the cross for us. You paid the price for us. Oh, Jesus, let us never take that in vain and remember who you are and what you've done. Doesn't matter what's going on in our world, what's going on in our life, but you are Jesus, Lord of it all. And I thank you. I thank you for the price that you paid for our healing, for our salvation, for our peace of mind. 
for our comfort, for our joy. Lord God, you are so wonderful. You are so wonderful. Forgive us where we've gotten caught up in the things that are going on in this world. That we would remember the power of the cross and that you went beyond that to death, hell, and the grave and you conquered it all and that you are seated in heaven forever making intercession for us. And I thank you that we can be called children of God. We love you and we honor you in this place today, Lord. Have your will, have your way. I thank you for the power of your word today that it will transform our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Good morning, church. We're so excited you guys are here. You have come out. You've ventured out in the smoky, hazy skies, which to me is like a reflection of the glory of God, right? <laughs> Maybe it doesn't make you not want to breathe, but, you know, we'll just look at it in a positive way. Um, we have Bible studies starting this week. We're so excited about. Um, our men's will meet on Tuesday night, and our women's meet on Thursday night as well as we'll have a morning online if you prefer to go online. But check out the app, go to the website. Um, I'll be in the back after service if you wanna talk to me about any more details with that, but we would love for you guys to sign up and be a part of those. Um, things may look differently, but it, the power of God is still present and it doesn't matter on the numbers, right? If we have to social distance, wear masks, whatever, it doesn't matter because Jesus is alive. We don't just sing that song to just sing a song. It's because there is power in that, and it's truth, right? And the word of God is truth. And so I am so excited this morning. Pastor Eric, are you bringing the word this morning? Pastor Eric is bringing the word to us this morning. Let's have our hearts open and expecting. Um, we have an opportunity before he comes up also to give to the Lord. And so we can do that on the church app. Um, <laughs> we can do that in the black box there in the back when you're leaving, or you can mail your offerings in. So take time to give to the Lord. That's another way of worship, but Brad's going to come up and greet you before Eric. <laughs> All right, thanks, Carrie. I threw Carrie a curveball. She wasn't supposed to come up after worship, but Comcast crashed and our live stream went down, so we're working on that real quick. So, uh, yeah, good morning. I'm not Eric, but I'll be up here for just a couple minutes. I'd like to bring Rob and Louise Harrington up here, please. Come on up. These are two of the most amazing people I've ever known, honestly. They are incredible. And uh, they have been an absolute gift to the city of Ording, to Abundant Life Community Church. Um, they're moving to South Dakota. It's not close. And... Uh, <laughs> They are just a treasure to our church. Luis is invested in your children in so many ways. Uh, Rob has, over this last year, been our point person for our building project. And uh, it, you may not know it from what everything you see, but we are making a ton of progress. And, um, and so we're re getting very, very close, like in the next few weeks, submitting a big package to the city. So... Uh, Rob, thank you for the, your investment in the future of Abundant Life in that way as well. Uh, but I want to pray over them. This is their last Sunday. And, uh, and so hopefully they'll come visit at some point. All right. They will be here for grand opening of the building when we build it. All right. That's, you heard it. All right. Somebody find him on social media and remind him of that when that day comes. Lord Jesus, I thank you for Rob and Luis, Lord, and just the the treasure. I thank you for loaning them to us for this season of their lives, Lord. I thank you for their investment and abundant life into your church and the body of Christ. Lord, I pray that as they go out, Lord, that they would find a new church family that would embrace them fully, Lord, and that, um, Lord, you're going to bless a church with these two. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you are with them as they go. Lord, I pray for their journey, for their road trip, today, Lord, this week, that you would, um, you would accompany them, Lord, that you would have your protection around their vehicle, Lord. We ask that you would provide every way as they go, Lord, 
We just ask that you be with them, Lord, that they would go out. I, I just know their hearts, Lord. They're not going out just to leave. They're going out to be sent, Lord. We, we just send them with our blessing. We send them, Lord God, and we ask that you would cover everything that they need. Lord, I pray, too, that you would just bless them for their investment in abundant life, Lord. That you would just pour out a double portion upon their lives, Lord, for everything that they've invested in this church and into this community, Lord God. Lord, even though they leave a, a hole here in, in the church and a hole in our hearts, Lord God, we know that you will bring others to come and that you will rally others to come and fill these places. And so, Lord, we, we pray, Lord, even in their place. We pray, Lord God, for uh, teachers to invest in our children. We pray for those to, to come and to take leadership in our building project, Lord God, and for uh, financial peace, university, and all those things, Lord God, that they have been involved in. Lord, we pray that you would come and that you would Fill those places at Abundant Life, Lord, and we ask that you would just uh, go with them and before them, in Jesus' name. I just want to take a minute to thank you guys personally. Um, I, Since we met, I mean, I remember meeting Louise for the first time, and the first thought that came to me was, I want to be like her when I grow up. <laughs> I mean, the peace that exudes from you, the wisdom that exudes from you is just incredible. And I'm sad because I had hoped that we could be, you could be a mentor to me, but I know what, what God's doing, and I know that it's right, and I know that um, we can still do that, you know, right? And so we love you guys so much. The first time you came, um, I was so excited to see you at Abundant Life, and then you guys just jumped right in, and to you, Rob, I mean, you have no, I, I don't think you have any idea of the burden that you have taken off my husband in the last few years with doing this building project and taking that on, and I want to thank you for that, because what it has done to relieve him has been huge, and um, we just are so grateful, and I know that God will be faithful to bring the next person along to do that. But for that season that you did that, I am so grateful for that. So thank you so much. We love you. We will miss you. Um, but we know that we will see you again. And um, whenever you come back, you, have, you better come and visit. <laughs> okay. All right. New rule. No one leaves next week. We're like three or four weeks in a row now. I'm starting to <laughs> stop it. <laughs> All right. Well, this uh, Friday, Abundant Life turned 21. Can you believe that? 21. We're a grown-up now. Can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, uh, we don't act. That, you don't have to act like it, but, I mean, we've been around 21 years. That is so crazy. It's hard to believe 21 years. And uh, do you ever get these places in your life where you feel like God's preparing you for something? I don't want to say set up because that sounds bad, <laughs> but like, you know what I'm saying? Kind of like, what's God set me up for? Anyone ever have that feeling in their life? Like, God, what do you got going on right now? What's, what, what are you, what are you cooking up in this season? And uh, I kind of feel like that right now. I kind of feel like that in this season. God is up to something. He is up to something. And I know he's doing something in abundant life this year. I've heard from so many people just this anticipation of God is doing something big. It's coming. It's coming. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> every single thing happening in this world is trying to shut that down. But we're not giving up and we're not giving in. Amen? We are going to overcome. God is doing something big. Our theme this year is commissioned. That we've been studying the life of Jesus and learning to go out with his authority. And, and so as we talk about going out and sending out, uh, people, there are people that we've been sending out, and, and for whatever reason. We've had families move to other states and kids going off to college, and to me it's more than just a going, it's a commissioning to see now go walk in the authority of Jesus. Take everything that you have drawn from abundant life and go out and take his authority. And then most recently, our last sermon series was called Sent. Sent. So here we're commissioned to go out and to leave and to walk in God's authority. And now we just did a sermon series on sent. And all of a sudden I'm thinking, God, are you trying to tell me something here? <laughs> I'm not leaving, by the way. Uh, so you're stuck with me. Uh, what is going on? Where, where, where is God moving and what does he have for us? God, are you calling us something? Is there a commissioning and ascending you have for abundant life? That's, that's kind of what I 
And, and when I was praying about this this last fall of 2019 about commissioned, I mean, this wasn't really necessarily on my radar. I wasn't thinking about this in terms of this theme. But I believe there is a commissioning and ascending that God's going to do. There is The answer is yes, God is commissioning and sending us. And I am excited this morning and a bit terrified as well to share with you an exciting announcement. Abundant Life Community Church is going to plant a church. We are planting a church. Come on, isn't that, you're stunned, but let's be excited. Come on, let's go. We are going to multiply the kingdom of God. This is not a time to shrink back. This is a time to advance. This is a time to multiply. And you know, all the things, you get married, you're like, okay, first you get married, and then you get a house, and then you get your cars, and then you get your pets, and then you get your kids, and we have this idea of order, and then you get married, and all of a sudden, oh, we're pregnant, and it's all out of order, yeah. right? And so in my mind, so we have a church, then we build a building, and then we, someday we plant a church, and God's like, it's just going to be out of order. Because it's time for us to send. It's time for us to go. In the book of Acts, chapter 12, I was reading this week, in the midst of a time of extreme trial. In Acts, chapter 12, the church is going through extreme trial. Here's what we find these words in Acts 12, 29. But the word of God increased and multiplied. And I believe that God wants to multiply the gospel in our region. He wants to increase the gospel in this region. And so we are going to walk into a season where we see God increase and multiply in our region. Now, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. What does that mean? What does that mean we're going to plant a church? Where are we going to start a church at? You have lots of questions, and I have a few answers. <laughs> Very few. <laughs> Very few answers. I, I have one answer, and, and that is, who's going to pastor this church that we're going to plant? I mean, that's the biggest question. Pastor Eric and Naomi Lundberg, come on up here. Let's go. Yeah, buddy. So these are the new pastors of Abundant Life's church plant. And so uh, it's exciting. Um, I'm so excited and so sad and terrified. There not the mix of emotions like vast? Yeah, there is quite a few. Um, they're not going away. Well, we're going we're gonna to plant something, and we're creating a kingdom partnership from now until the end of eternity. That's our heart, and that's our goal. Uh, this is a time where, you know, <laughs> we're part of the Foursquare Church, Foursquare Denomination, and our, our leadership at the district and national level has been giving us this message for the past five or six years, which is, send your best. And I'm like, I don't like that message. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I want to keep my best, right? <laughs> uh, and really, Eric and Naomi are among the best, and they are they have a heart for the Lord, and I know that um, as we go out and do this, then it, uh, God is going to be with it. So um, would you guys tell us, like, why in the world? Why plant a church? Why should we plant a church? <laughs> Someone's got an answer. Well, um... I guess, first of all, one of the first things that God told Adam and Eve when he created them was to be fruitful and multiply. And obviously, Eric and I have done that in our family. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but like, healthy things multiply. Healthy, healthy things reproduce. I remember in biology class in college, they talked about, like, all living things need sleep. They, they, or they need rest. They need food. And they need to reproduce, like to survive. And so um, we just believe that like this is, abundant life is fruitful and it's mm -hmm. time to multiply, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, one, one thing we wanna uh, make sure that we are very clear on is there isn't a leaving, there is a sending. And those are two very different things. We, we have, uh, prayed and sought God, and I mean, Brad and I have talked about something like this for years, um, and this is just the season where God is saying, I want to reach more people. I want to reach the least, the last, and the lost, and so we just want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, and so we brought that to our pastor, and we said, we feel like this is something that God is stirring. Will you pray with us? Will you pray and, and help us help 
this be confirmed if this is in fact the Lord and we came back and we've been following steps of confirmation so this is a healthy thing this is a unified thing I've been in church my whole life and I've seen conversations like this where we're talking unified but behind the scenes there's a mess and I can assure you that there is no mess behind the scenes. Okay, this is a unified thing where we have come together as leadership of abundant life. And we have said, God is doing something. What is that? And as we have prayed, we have uncovered that God is wanting to multiply what is healthy. And that is abundant life. So. All right. Yes, I absolutely agree. We, we actually like each other. Yeah. And we like doing ministry together. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so for, for a target. Uh, just so you know, we're, we're shooting for 2021. Um, now that's a big range, right? That's a 12 month range. So that's all we're saying right now is 2021. That gives us a lot of leeway sometime in 2021 is our goal next year, uh, because next year is going to be better than this year. Come on. But we're preparing right now for that. Uh, as far as where it's going to be at, I can say it's somewhere in this region. <laughs> How about that? Um, so most, most likely if you were to, if you, if you go up the hill, Graham, South Hill, and beyond, like if you were to head that way all the way out to Tacoma, somewhere out there, but we're still working through it. We're going to go on some prayer drives. We're going to just be seeking God on an exact spot, but we know that we want to see God multiplied, his gospel multiplied out there. So uh, tell me, what do you feel the Holy Spirit impressing on you as you lead this endeavor? Well, I think it's uh, so much of it is taking what we have been invested with here out to places where that's not available. Um, and we were just talking about this the other day. I think one thing that our church is amazing at, and that is caring for each other. Like that is really true. And, and if you follow Facebook threads and as pastors, we have a thread going of people that are you know, in need or whatever, and just how many people, it's like, an, it's like an instinctual thing that people in this church community will help one another. And that is a beautiful and God-ordained thing. That is the power of community. And that's not available to everybody. And if we take that type of a community and take it out to where people have never experienced that, how much stronger is that going to make our communities, the community that we land in, how much stronger is that going to make the body of Christ, and how much stronger is that going to make the next generation? So that's one of the things that we really feel God pulling us towards. We also feel him pulling us towards dark places, to places where there is you know, human trafficking, where there is drug addiction, where there is poverty, all the places where it's probably not the, why, like, uh, I almost, it's probably not the most comfortable place to plant a church, that's where we feel God is pulling us to. Amen. So how can people, if they want more information, which we don't have a lot of, but maybe they want like one tidbit, uh, or how can they get involved in this sending process? And I, I will say, church, we are sending out a church, all right? And so how would people get involved in this sending, and how can they find out more? Well, I think uh, the first thing that you can do is you can pray for us. You can also donate money, too. Uh, you write checks. You write big numbers with lots of zeros. That's also a way. <laughs> I got to get used to talking like that, I suppose. But anyway, I think that the big way, the big way that you can support this church, and this isn't going to sound uh, like proper, but I think the best way you can support your church and what I'm, uh, this new church is by supporting this church. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. Support uh, the ministries that are right in front of you, because a strong sending church is going to send a church out to be strong. And I think that that is probably the best way. Yes, we are going to have some information gatherings and some prayer gatherings where we're going to come together because we have been stepping in confirmation and looking for confirmation. That's Prayer is a great place to find that, to hear from the Holy Spirit. But that, that's just what I felt this whole time. I've just felt like the investment that we need to make is here and the investment you need to make is here and when you send us, that stuff will fall into place. So as, as kind of backwards as that sound, because wouldn't you need you know, this and this and this and this, I, we don't want to take away from what God is doing in this season, from what God is doing in abundant life. We want to 
add, if anything, to the excitement and to the move of the Holy Spirit? Do you want to say anything on that? No, that's okay. All right. Let's pray. We, this is going to need a lot of prayer. And maybe one way you get involved is saying, I just want to be a prayer partner. I want to be a prayer partner for you as you go through this. So, Lord Jesus, we come before you. And, we, and Lord, this is an exciting time for us as a church where we get to multiply, where we get to expand the move that you are doing here, Lord, that your church will grow and be healthier. Lord, I, I pray right now for Pastor Eric and Naomi, Lord God, that as they continue to walk through this process, as we walk through this process together, that there would be wisdom and discernment, Lord. I pray that you provide every need. I pray that you'd give them courage and boldness, Lord God, that then when, when they face things that seem intimidating or scary, Lord God, that they would be able to stare those things down and know that they will overcome in the name of Jesus. So we ask that you would go before them in this process, Lord God. We, we support them. We lift them up, Lord God, and we join together with them, Lord. And we look forward to the day where the, the doors of our new church will open up, Lord God, somewhere else in this region. And people that we will never reach here in the city of Ording will come and will hear the gospel and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, go before it. Prepare the way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Pastor Eric's got a word for us this morning, so here we go. Let's do it. Okay, we're on. And I think also one thing that we didn't mention is Naomi and I have been going with our Foursquare District uh, through an, a very intensive training, uh, uh, training program for church planters. Uh, the Foursquare denomination was found, was, is very encouraging of church planting and reproduction and uh it's been something we've been involved with since february and praying about for a few years so there is a lot of training going on behind the scenes and uh, a lot of stuff that we've learned and relationships that we're building so this is a very very exciting thing so we're going to talk today very briefly and i don't have a watch up here i i i i time this out for about 15 to 20 minutes so I'll call you up, Mike, when we're done, and if we finish up a little bit early, that's awesome, but I, d I doubt it. So uh, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I, I kind of doubt it. So anyway, uh, so I have sermon notes you can look at on the U version. We also, on the church app, I was having some problems with the church app last night on my end, so if they don't show up, you can follow along on the slideshow or you can look it up in U version. Go to U version. Go to events. Type in nine eight three six zero, and you can follow along there. But we are going to talk today uh, about something interesting, and I, I, it's around the word pivot. And this is the word that I feel like God gave me for this message, and we've entitled it "Pivoting in to Destiny." And destiny is something that. Uh, I don't think a lot of us realize that, that it's something that we carry. And I want to read a couple of definitions, and then we're going to get into the scripture out of John chapter 21. But according to Webster's Dictionary, the word pivot means the act of turning or shifting. Very simply. Turning or shifting. And my kind of definition, my, my definition of that would be a supernatural change of focus or perspective, and we're going to talk a little bit about this this morning. Now, destiny def definition, uh, according to Webster's Dictionary, basically is something that is to happen to someone. In other words, there is something that is going to happen. There is something available to us in the future. There is a path that is set before us for us to walk out and to engage in. And I would say, in my own definition, a divinely designed and ordained destination. All of us have a destination in front of us that God designed in our spirits before the world was even created for us to walk out. And I truly believe that. I do not believe that there is one of you here that is an accident. One of you is here that your life is a mistake or it can't be something great. I don't care what anyone has ever told you in your life or what voices have spoken to you. Your life matters and your life has purpose and has a destination. Now, supernaturally speaking, my, my definition of pivot into destiny means this. Supernaturally 
changing your perspective or efforts toward your God-ordained purpose. And we're going to see this happen in the life of Peter today. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read this entire text, John chapter 1, or 21, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to read it. So if, if we could just stand up as we read God's word, stretch out a little bit before we dive in for the next couple of minutes. I'm going to be reading out of the New International Version. Let's get into it. We'll pray and we'll unpack this a little bit and see what God wants to say to us all. Bible says this, afterwards Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the sea of Tiberias. It happened this way, Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, the two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were far, not far from shore, about 200 cubits or 100 yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Father God, we thank you for your presence in this place today. We thank you for the word that is going to challenge us, that is going to change us, that is going to rearrange us, that is going to correct us, that is going to give us perspective, that is going to pivot our church and our lives into the destiny that you have designed us for. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, just to build a little bit of... Uh, a framework around this this passage Jesus had died and rose from the dead and he had appeared to his disciples many of them a few different times he appeared to Thomas he appeared walking through uh, some locked doors to his disciples and so the disciples are in this place they're in this very interesting place where some of them have seen the Lord since his resurrection, some of them have not, and I'm sure that there were rumors, there were questions, there were thinking, they were in this confused place. Okay, can you imagine the church? All these promises that Jesus said was going to happen, now they're seeing them fulfilled. Jesus dies, he raised from the dead, there's all this just kind of spiritual confusion going on. And the disciples go down into a boat. They go down and they go out to go fishing at night. And I found that this was very interesting. They had seen the miraculous power of the Lord. They have seen him raise the dead. They have seen him heal the sick. They have seen him forgive sins. They saw him fulfill every prophecy about him from the time he was arrested to the resurrection. They had seen Jesus do everything that he said he was going to do. But I find the fact that they go back and go fishing to be very, very interesting. Because once they left their boats to follow the Lord, their path had changed. They had been projected into a destiny that was designed for them. Jesus even said to Peter, I am going to build my church on you. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Peter carried that promise and that prophetic declaration over his life with him and this is just an interesting thing it seems like they're going back to where they were before jesus commissioned them it seems like they're taking a step back they're going back to being fishermen and i have to ask myself sometimes do we go back to a comfortable place do we go back as a church to a place where 
we understand things where we know things when things get too heavy and things get too real and we realize that that god is calling us to a place that maybe we've never been to before or it seems scary or we don't have all the answers we don't have all the faith we we don't have everything lined up to help us get there we fall back to the places and the patterns that we were at before Now, the disciples are sitting in the boat, and they're going out, and, th and in this place where they've gone back to, they're not finding much fruit. They're not catching anything, the Bible says. And then something happens. I mean, do you guys ever feel that way? Sometimes I feel that way. Do you ever feel like you're, you're working hard and you're doing things, be it at life, be it with family, be it with, in your ministry, being it in your, your, wherever you're at? Do you ever feel like you're, you're in a place and you're just not bearing the fruit or catching the fish or getting the harvest that you had prayed for and believed for? Something very special happens in this moment. When the sun begins to rise, Jesus is standing on the shore. They don't recognize him. They see Jesus in the distance. They don't recognize that it's him. And one thing, before, before this revelation happens to them, I think that one thing we have to realize is resorting to the comfortable can immobilize our destiny. As Christians, we love, like, and I don't even want to say as Christians, but as people, we like to be comfortable. We like to be in control. We like to know what's going to happen. We like to know what's coming next. We like to know all these things. I love to know what, what, what is God doing. Like, my wife and I are getting ready to step out into a season where we don't have all the answers, which drives me crazy. It drives me crazy because I'm like, well, I want to put together a five-year plan, and I want to put together a timeline, and I want to have all these things, and what's the name of the church going to be? What's the exact location? Where are we going to meet? Where are we going to get microphone stands? Where are we going to get money? Who, you know, all these things, and I don't have any of those answers because I feel like there's something that God is saying to me, and that is I don't want you to be comfortable. I don't want you to be in the habit of being comfortable. Okay, nowadays, the last thing the world needs is a comfortable church. Bottom line, we don't need a comfortable church. We need a church that is uncomfortable because uncomfortable people will take more risks because we get used to being uncomfortable. And we've gotten used to not knowing what's going to happen in this culture that we live in today. Okay, when it fir this whole like, COVID thing broke out and something different happened and it was like the end of the world. But now it's like, okay, what's, what's next? You know, you know, is it going to be like, who knows? Uh, you have to follow the meme thread to know what people are projecting. Is it going to be Godzilla? Is it going to be a giant turkey? Who knows? So, but anyway, I, I feel like God is, is calling Abundant Life Community Church out of things that are comfortable, out of places that are the same. I'm going to move on to John chapter 21. Uh, I'm going to go to verse 4, and it says this, Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. And I feel like so many times in our lives, Jesus is standing on the shore. Now, they're in a boat 100 yards from shore. Jesus, Jesus is there, and he shouts out some instructions. He shouts out some commands. He calls them friends. He, he, he is warm. Like, he, he, he is showing them that it is him. And he's standing on the shore, and he's giving instructions. And the disciples are faced with a moment that many of us are faced with often, and that is, are we going to choose to listen to the voice of the Lord? Or are we going to continue to put effort into what we are doing right now that obviously isn't working that well? Okay, fishermen need to catch fish. Fishermen need to catch fish in order to actually be fishermen. Okay? So Jesus is saying, hey, and this is kind of the picture that, that I got. So they're, they're standing in a boat. Actually, I'm going to have, can you come up here for a minute? 
Levi, come up here for a minute. Okay, we're going to stand right here. Now, we're going to pretend that we're fishermen, okay? So we're going to stand like shoulder to shoulder right here. Okay, there's a few more disciples than this. But, okay, so we're throwing our nets over the side, and he's sad, and you're sad, and I'm sad. And Jesus is down there where Jewel is. And, Je and Jewel, Jesus, whoever, is going to, is said, friends, throw your net on the other side. Go ahead, Jewel. No, no, you say it. Yeah, say, throw your nets on the other side. Okay, thank you, Jewel. Very, very godly. Okay. So, we're here, and we're working, and we're like, oh, man, this is lame. And Levi's like, oh, man, I quit. Should have been a carpenter. You know, all these different things. He's going to the union. We don't know. So, we throw it. Now, watch what happens. So, what we're all going to do, and just kind of follow me, we're not changing where we're standing. You understand? Now, watch this. We're not changing uh, the the position of the boat but we are changing our perspective and we're just going to pivot this way now if i look you guys stay right there you look good you just i just want to show you off a little bit you know over here it looks the same i mean i'm sure on this side of the boat was water and on this side of the boat was water on this side of the tent is chairs on this side of the tent is chairs and people and friends and all that but we shifted and pivoted our perspective a little bit, and the miracle was on this side. The harvest was on this side. What God wanted to do was on this side of the boat. They didn't get out of the boat. They didn't get a new boat. They didn't get a new net. They just changed their perspective a little bit. Okay, you guys can go ahead and sit down and give them a round of applause. They are both single. You guys are single, right? Okay, no? All right. I tried. Anyway, <laughs> but I think that this is key to the message this morning that God wants to share to us. I think a lot of times Jesus is standing on the shore of our lives, and he's asking us, is what you're doing actually working? Is what you're doing right now, is it reaching its full potential? Are you on course to reach the fullness of your destiny? And that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. And I think that in a lot of ways, and I'm guilty of this too, I'm not going to ask the other pastors if they are or anybody else, but I have been doing this fishing on this side for so long that it's almost like I don't even need to listen to the voice over there. I know the motions of the net. I know the motions that I can do. I can fake it really well. I'm just being honest, okay? Okay. But there is something on this side of the boat. I'm going to have to get uncomfortable. The boat might rock a little bit when I'm pivoting. I might get a little splash on my shoes. You know what I'm saying? So one of the other fishermen boat might be like, dude, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? But I'm turning this way in faith, believing that what God has for me is down there in the water. Although may, I might not be able to see it. Like that, It's just kind of weird. It's like where the fish, like, you ever wonder that, like, practically about miracles? Like, were they all, like, in a school? Was, like, what was happening? Like, did they just come? Was Jesus, like, you know, and all the fish just kind of came to, like, I don't know how that works. God can do whatever he wants because he made them, okay? But the church, and here's what I believe that has happened through this crazy season of 2020. I believe that the church, and not, not talking about the, I'm talking about the institution, yes, but the people of the church globally, we are all beginning to realize that all we need is Jesus. All we need is the voice of Jesus. All we need is to be able to see Jesus. All we need to do is be able to hear Jesus. That's all we need. We don't need any of the other stuff. We don't need a new boat. The boat we have is just fine. We don't need a net. Obviously, it was just fine. We don't want to spend all our time trying to fix the boat when the miracle's on this side. What God is calling us to do is on this side. If we're here fixing and waxing the boat, and I think if we paint the boat, then maybe the fish will jump in and we won't even have to do anything. So I, I just feel like God is just saying it's time to pivot just a little bit. Are we listening to the new marching orders, or are we holding tight to what God has already given us. I believe that there are new gifts and new seasons. I believe there's new callings and new anointings and new seasons. I believe that it, when a new season comes, there is something special. And I believe we are on the brink of a new season. As my wife and I have prayed over this church plant for the past year or two, we have said, God, we want to see our sending ignite revival at Abundant Life. That's what we're praying for. 
The Bible says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, Neither do, new me do men pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst. The wine will run out, and the wineskin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. I don't, I, don't, I don't drink wine, but what I do know is back in these days, they would take goat skins, uh, and they would sew them together, and they would pour the newly fermented, uh, I think that's the right word, fermented uh, wine into that skin, and that wine would stretch stretch the wine skin out to the way it needed to be to hold that wine. But if they took an old wine skin that they'd already used and poured new wine in it, it would cause the seams to burst because it had already been stretched out for the wine it was holding previously. Okay? So it would just ruin the wine skin and it would ruin the wine and everything would just kind of pour out on the ground and everybody would be sad and they'd have to start the whole process over again. I believe, prophetically speaking, that God is giving Abundant Life Community Church a new wineskin. And he's saying, trust that the wine I'm going to put in is new. Trust that the wine I'm going to pour in, I want you to hold this wineskin. You may have to hold it for a second, but that wine is going to come in and it's going to stretch out and it's going to be exactly what it needs to be in this season. Because the world has changed over the past eight months. The world has changed. And I believe that we have been given the greatest opportunity of my lifetime as the body of Christ to reimagine. And we've been given the opportunity and the anointing and the, 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 the supernatural strategy to reach more people than we probably ever have before. We have learned, like so many people have learned how to use online things that never have before. You know, we have so many avenues to get the gospel out. God wants to give us something new that we have never experienced yet. Something we cannot control. A new flame, a new fire, a new mission, a new commissioning. And I think so many times those of us who have grown up in the church, I am so guilty of this. If nobody else is, that's awesome. I am. I was born again in a youth revival. Hundreds of youth. Uh, in Tacoma, Washington came, and they were just the radicalest of radicals. Like, you take, it's, I love youth because they're so radical, and they don't have the life experience yet to know that maybe some of their, their displays of their radicalness might not be so, so, I'm not talking about our kids, but I'm talking about kids at other churches. Those other churches, you know, down there, that are down the road, you know. <laughs> oh, the things we would do. But anyway, I, I, I prayed, and I said, God, I want that. I miss that. That's the wrong prayer that I need to be praying. I need to be praying for our young people. And I will always, always be your pastor until you're 90 or I'm dead. So just so you know that, I'll, f I'll hunt you all down. Anyway, just saying, just saying uh, we need to be praying for something that we don't necessarily have a definition for that we definitely haven't seen yet okay because we can put trust in what we've seen we can put trust in what we've experienced it's hard to put faith in something we don't know exactly what it looks like because then when it comes it's like ah oh, it's big and scary like 2020 we don't know what's coming next <laughs> but i believe spiritually there is a counter to what the enemy is doing which by the way can i just say this satan ain't winning 2020 I'm sorry. He ain't winning this one. We win this fight. Second point is this. In order to pivot into destiny, we must be willing to try something new. Not something unwise. Not something foolish. Not something reckless. But something new. We have to begin to think differently. We have to begin to pray different prayers. We have to believe for different things. And we'll know when it shows up because it'll taste like the Lord. Okay, the enemy doesn't taste like the Lord. Bad ideas don't taste like the Lord. They just taste like a mess. I know because I've had plenty of bad ideas. Now, this is kind of where the short, and this is like a different message. So much of it is coming just directly from my heart. 
this is where the story changes, where, where it shifts for the disciples. Something special happens in this moment. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing a net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Peter has this divine revelation. If we remember the last time we saw Peter, he was denying the Lord. Denied him three times, just like Jesus said he would. Now you can imagine the guilt and the shame that Peter was carrying. Watching his Lord be crucified, knowing that he denied him. Knowing that he betrayed him. Noted that he bowed to the culture, that he bowed to the fear, that he bowed to the intimidation. I can only imagine what Peter was going through. And at this moment, he realizes there is a moment and a time for redemption. But Jesus knew his Lord. Jesus knew the Lord, and he knew the heart of our God. And it says this, as soon as Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, and he jumped into the water. Peter knew that all he needed to do was get to Jesus. He wasn't thinking about, oh, I probably should go to the back of the boat and hide behind the, you know, whatever's back there because I'm ashamed because I, I denied God and he told me I would and I said I would never do it and I did it anyway. Here's what we need to realize. So much, I think, that holds us back as Christians, myself as well, is this horrible, evil, demonic thing called shame. Shame holds the church back because we know who we are inside in the, in the secret places of our life. We know the sins we committed. And for some crazy reason, we buy into this lie where I've got to hide it, I've got to keep it deep down inside, I've got to hold on to it because I don't want anyone to know, and I certainly don't want Jesus to know because if he knows, then I'm all of a sudden disqualified from the calling he's put on my life. I mean, don't raise your hand, but I'm sure that we all can relate to that. I and this is going to be a very personal story to me, and I, I didn't, I don't like talking about this part of my life very often, but I, I, I'm going to because I think it's going to set some people free. And it, for probably the first, I don't know, eight or nine years of our marriage, I hit a drinking problem. I hit an alcohol problem from everybody. Hit it from my wife, hit it from my parents, hit it from my in-laws, hit it from my coworkers, hit it from my church members. Hit it from myself. Today marks 10 years, haven't had a drop. Switch to LaCroix. <laughs> Since that 10 years, my marriage has been restored. Okay, I have gone into full-time ministry. Well, it, define full-time ministry. Full-time ministry, I'm being, I, I have carried many different roles here at this church. Okay. I've talked to so many people about this part of my life that was so I was so ashamed of, but I realized the more I hold it in, the people the less people that are going to be set free from it. Just like Peter, I need to be running to Jesus. We need to be running to Jesus. We have got to quit holding on to the places that give us shame that God dealt with a long time ago. And we need to 